Kenneth here from Salute Quest. Here we are today to talk about One Deck Dungeon, uh, this little game. Uh, it's, a, it's a small box, but uh, yeah, it's a great game, uh, if I am to be honest. Now, I'm not much of a dice guy myself, I gotta admit, uh, but yeah, this game uh, won me over. Um, even though it's packed with dice and pretty much all you do is uh, manage dice. I mean, you roll your dice, you uh, try to somehow um, make the best of the rolls. Uh, even if you have a bad ones, you have, you know, a few ways to minimize your, uh, your bad rolls. Uh, yeah, and the game, yeah, it offers the, the, those, uh, those opportunities. So there's not much frustration in rolling dice in this game. Uh, at least, at least in my in my opinion, um, since yeah, I'm not a, a fan of dice at all. Uh, but yeah, in this game, I'm quite uh, okay with it because well, it is the main mechanic. So if I didn't like that, I would not enjoy this game at all. So if you don't like dice, don't discard one deck dungeon right away uh, because it has uh, it has you know its uh, its perks. Uh, which are, I mean, well, for instance, for, for once, I mean, you can't expect the world from it. This is a small box game, it's a filler game. Um, I mean, it, it, uh, it does have a, a bit of a footprint on the table, even though it's a small box. So if you want to uh, take it somewhere, beware that uh, it occupies a bit of space, as you uh, were able to see on the playthrough. Uh, the, the box is small, but uh, yeah, it's cool to uh, take it with you somewhere. But let's say you're on a, you're going on a plane. You wanna, you wanna play a board game uh, on the journey. Uh, this one might not be uh, the best option because it's going to take a bit of space and you probably won't be able to fit everything on your small area uh, that you have on the plane. But uh, yeah, apart from that, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, the, small, uh, the box is small and it's very uh, friendly to carry around. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, it's a small game, so it's not trying to be a, a huge dungeon crawler. I mean, it's not trying to be this guy right here, Gloomhaven, not at all, okay? So don't expect the world from it and you will be just fine. I mean, for what it is, it's a great, great filler game. I mean, it's one of the games I uh, come back to the most. Uh, I have fun, pretty, pretty much, I have fun every single time I play it. Uh, and as I was saying, I'm not a, a dice guy. Uh, but this game does uh, bring dice into the equation very well. Uh, I mean, you are rolling, um, you are rolling your dice, but you have a lot of, uh, well, not, not at first, you don't have um, that many options to mitigate your bad rolls, uh, but you will gain them as you are progressing in the dungeon itself. Uh, you do have a choice on uh, if you're taking more dice to roll, if you're taking skills to maybe um, lower that frustration, the skills usually are helpful for bad rolls, um, or if you just uh, you want to, well, I, I may have some bad rolls, but if I take an item that gives me more dice, Maybe that's going to um, settle in the middle, uh, settle those bad rolls with more dice that might give me good rolls. So you do have that kind of leverage and it's your choice how to um, mitigate, I guess, how to try to mitigate your bad rolls. If with skills that will use your dice, your bad rolls, you can use them for skills or if you just want to roll more dice and, you know, pray for the best. Uh, we did, uh, you know, in the playthrough, it's funny, I was re-watching or watching it uh, and I was kind of complaining, but I did not roll bad at all. I rolled pretty well, um, at least uh, with the standards of my gameplays. This one was not bad at all. We had some pretty good rules in there. Um, so yeah, I was kind of complaining. Uh, you might get annoyed of uh, my comments on bad rolls during the playthrough. And you're totally right, because I had no reason to complain. Um, but yeah. Even if we did have some more bad rules, I think we, we had a lot of options to, uh, to mitigate them. Uh, yeah, and I think, I mean, the game offers enough, enough choices to mitigate the rules. Not plenty, but you don't want plenty either, because if you have plenty of choices, then the game is just going to be easy um, every single time. Now, again, to help with that frustration of the, the dice rules, uh, the game offers uh, the chance, well, it's not offers the chance. I mean, if you don't manage to defeat uh, to fill in all of the boxes in the, the, the creatures, your enemies, or the traps, if you, don't, uh, if you aren't able to fulfill the trap, you don't fail, okay? And that's a huge, uh, a huge uh, thumbs up. That's very important. You don't fail uh, this mission. You just, 
Well, the ones you don't cover, you're just going to take either that damage or you're going to spend some extra time, okay? But you are still taking the, this card as a reward, either uh, experience or taking the item or taking the skill. That's a huge... Uh, a huge plus for me. I mean, if you have a bad rule, I mean, you're frustrated already, you're going to uh, be kind of pissed, and you still, if you don't take anything from it, that would be a big letdown, okay? And that would probably uh, keep some people away from returning to the game. Uh, so, giving you the card itself, saying, okay, well, you rolled uh, a, bit, a bit poorly on this one, you can mitigate your bad rules, but here, take the card anyway as a reward, you're taking some damage, but you'll be stronger on the next fight, okay? And learn with your bad rules, uh, learn with the things you couldn't mitigate, if, it's, uh, if you're missing melee or if you're missing magic. And yeah, use the, this new card uh, the best you can to kind of... Um, kind of cover for those weaknesses, okay? So that is a big, a big, in, uh, a big decision. Uh, from the designers, I guess, uh, for, to, to give you that reward anyway, just having you uh, take some penalties, and that, uh, I think, makes all of the difference in this game. Uh, because, yeah, it's, uh, it's a dice game, and I know some people don't like dice. I'm one of them. Uh, but, yeah, this game totally um, goes over that. I mean, it, it completely... It, it doesn't uh, worry me to play this game. I mean, I, I, some, some games that are dice-heavy, I know, oh, yeah, I'm going to roll dice. I know I'm going to come out of it a bit <laughs> pissed because of dice rolls, but not with this one. There are so many options to mitigate it, and even if I can't, yeah, I'm taking the card as a reward. So yeah, that's that could be one of the uh, flaws of the game, but honestly, I, I don't think it is. I think the game really um, picks itself up and uh, you know manages to turn around and give you a great experience while rolling dice. Um, yeah, what else can I say about this game? Uh, now. The game is, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of has, uh, it has to have flaws. I mean, it's not a perfect game. Uh, if I had to point one, I think it would be the replayability. Um, while there are some, uh, quite a few classes, I mean, you have the Paladin, the Warrior, the Mage. Paladin, Warrior, Mage, Archer, uh, the Rogue that we used. Is that it? I think that's five. I'm... I'm not completely sure, I think it's five. Now, there's uh, some nice replayability in there because they uh, their starting dice are pretty different. I have three of them here with me. Uh, so the mage starts with one melee, two agility, four magic. Paladin, three melee, one agility, three magic. So, and the warrior for strength uh, or for melee, two agility, one magic. So they are uh, pretty different in terms of dice that you are starting up with, uh, which means you are you will be wanting to face very different monsters at the start, uh, while the mage will want, you know, well, uh, monsters that want those blue dice, and he will uh, try and disarm, like, magic traps. Uh, the warrior will want to fight, well, most of the, the, the enemies have strength, I think, or, or at least a big part of them, uh, because the traps are mostly agility, uh, a few have the magic way as well, some have strength as well, uh, they're not all agility, but agility is in great part what is present in the traps as you saw in the playthrough where we got a lot of them which was good for us actually so yeah you have replayability in these uh, five characters that's that's fine i think they are different enough to warrant um, you to come back to the game and try them out all of them the heroic feats are pretty different as well uh, and the, their their ability is different as well and uh, yeah they are very different i like i like that um now as for the minions uh, the, the the cars you are exploring while in the dungeon maybe not so much uh, and that's i think is the 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 major flaw of the game i mean it's not a flaw because again this is a small box game this this game isn't trying to bring you the same experience as gloomhaven or sword and sorcery or the sand second journey okay this is a small box dungeon crawler if you can even call it that a dungeon crawler i probably wouldn't call it a dungeon crawler uh, but let's just put it in that same box uh, anyway um, just to be clear on uh, yeah because it's a fantasy theme you're going through a dungeon not really crawling through it but oh well um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, the box, well, it's small and it has a limited number of cards in it. Uh, your, um, I don't know how many cards are in this dungeon, but you have, it's a, it's, you have that risk of uh, 
while playing uh, the same on the same game, going from floor two, one, two, and three, uh, to see the same stuff. And that actually happened in the playthrough. Doesn't happen often, uh, I gotta say. It's not really often that you are in the same game, uh, going through the same stuff on floor one, floor two, and floor three. The same uh, traps or, or the same minions. It's pretty rare, I gotta say. We, we got it on camera, but it's pretty rare. Um, now, so that, that's not a problem on the same dungeon. The problem for me is as you are uh, playing more and more and more, doing more playthroughs, different playthroughs, uh, you might end up, well, um, seeing uh, a lot of the same stuff um, all the time. Now, the game tries to mitigate that as well. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, uh, um, intentional or not, but the mechanism of spending two time before each of your turns. To, so you spend two time, then you either enter a room or explore. Uh, that, that, that small detail of spending this two time means you are discarding two cards, which means you aren't facing them uh, in this floor. And uh, you discard quite a bit of stuff uh, during, while you're playing. So it's uh, very, very um, normal that, let's say, these two cards, it's a Wraith and a Spiked Log. So let's say I discard this Wraith, the Spiked Log, uh, Spiked Log, sorry. Um, so I'm taking away stuff that I won't be facing in this floor. Uh, when I get to the other one, I might discard them all over again. So I might not even face the Wraith in said dungeon that I'm, I'm exploring. Um, which means the game itself is taking away stuff so that you aren't going to um, see it right now You might see it on your next game. So in that sense the game tries to um, Remove stuff, you know from your play uh, Let's put this aside and maybe on the next game you might be able to see it You might discard something else while spending time and they will then bring back these monsters um, So yeah, I, I think it's a great system I don't know if it was intentional, the, the, the two time, if it, this was the idea or not, but if it was, uh, amazing idea. If it wasn't, still amazing idea because it worked out just fine. Um, I mean, we, we faced a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of the same stuff in our playthrough, but there was so, so, so much stuff we didn't see. Uh, I mean, if I just go through this really quick, oh, there's even traps we didn't see. So arrow wall, we didn't see. Bandits, Pit of Spikes, I don't remember us doing this one. We might have done this one. Um, the Beetle, I don't think we did this one. Uh, I don't know. The Shadow, we didn't do it. The Ogre, which is really cool, we didn't do it. I guess we discarded all of them. Ice Elemental, we did see him. The Goblin, I don't remember. The Fire Elemental. Uh, what else? Well, uh, Cave In, Boulder, Rune. Yeah, we did this. The Phantom, we didn't see it either. Skeleton, I don't remember fighting in. I don't know. Uh, it was uh, some days ago. I'm not filming this in the same day as the playthrough, so I can't remember everything. Um, but still, th there's quite a bit of stuff here that we didn't see. Uh, so if we, if I was to film another playthrough, we would see quite a few of uh, of different stuff. So. Yeah, in that sense, the game tries and uh, the game, I don't know, the game knows it's a, or the designer knew it's kind of a weakness and he found a way to try and uh, pull some of the stuff away to bring it back on the next game. And that, yeah, works great. Uh, I think it was uh, lovely, uh, handle, handled lovely. Um, yeah, it's a big plus. Um, so yeah, but it's still it's still a one of the flaws because if you play the game a lot, it has a campaign. I mean, if you go through the campaign uh, with one character, you might not get tired of it, but you, if, if you are starting your second campaign, you will eventually grow tired of seeing the same stuff and fighting the same stuff. Uh, I mean, yes, it's a given. You are not fighting it, 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 all of these things the same way. I mean, if you're a mage or a warrior, you're going to be fighting differently. You're going to be wanting different skills in different items because they, they, they start completely different. Um, but in the end, you, you will try, at least I try to um, have a good balance of uh, agility, magic and strength. I, I try to not to go a full into one, uh, just one of the aspects. Uh, I try to have, you know, a bit of everything. So in the end of the campaign or in the end of that game, you're going to be balanced and you're going to be fighting the same way with the same dice almost. Different skills, but pretty much the same pool of dice. Uh, so in that sense, it might get a bit tiresome. Uh, it hasn't for me yet, but uh, I, am it, I imagine it becoming uh, tiresome. Uh, but, you know, it, again, this is, it's a cheap game. It's a filler game. It's not trying to be 
uh, a huge dungeon crawler to give you a campaign of uh, 1000 hours like Gloomhaven. Uh, yeah, I keep coming back to Gloomhaven just because, you know, people compare stuff these days. Uh, oh, it doesn't have a campaign, then I don't care about that game. Or, oh, is it a dungeon crawler? But uh, yeah, that's too fast. It doesn't have that uh, many details. It's too superficial. I mean, yeah, this is a small box. It's a filler game. Okay. So for what it is, it brings a lot to the table. Uh, I really would uh, recommend this game. Um, not really, then wouldn't need to think uh, too much on that. Uh, but yeah, if you are growing tires, tired of these cards, there's an expansion, Forest of Shadows. You can get that, combine it with the base game, it's combinable, and you'll just have, you know, a slew of new stuff uh, to use and to see in your playthroughs. And again, that mechanic of taking those two cards out is going to be uh, shine even more because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you're not going to see maybe in your first game or second game only on your or your third. So yeah, that uh, that's a big plus. It's a game that completely benefits from the expansion uh, because it covers one of the ma or the major flaw for me, which is you know seeing a lot of stuff and getting tired of the same stuff coming out on every game. Yeah, but, uh, enough enough of that for me. Um, apart from that, I mean, uh, I don't have really have anything bad to say about it. I love the, the, the way they went with the characters, uh, having all females, I really like that, it's a great detail, I'll be honest, I, I didn't notice it myself, it's something I only noticed when I saw a comment on a forum, uh, and yeah, I went back and checked, and uh, it's curious that I didn't notice it, but yeah, it's pretty cool they went uh, that way, I believe uh, the expansion uh, does the same, I think they're all females, don't quote me, I'm not completely sure, but I think it does. Uh, we will eventually have a, a playthrough here with the expansion as well, the Forest of Shadows. I definitely want to cover it, um, just don't know when. Uh, I, I don't even know if we're going to do a campaign for this. You guys, It's up to you guys, you guys decide. Um, but if we don't do the campaign, at least the expansion uh, we will have here on the channel. So One Deck Dungeon will at least return in that form. Um, so yeah. In terms of components, uh, they're pretty cool. I really like the heart-shaped uh, tokens for your HP. Uh, they went into tro the, that trouble and, and gave us some personalized uh, tokens, which are, are very lovely. Um, the dice are great, great size, uh, translucent. I really uh, like translucent dice. Uh, brings, you know, brings a bit more, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say color, but it's a bit more joyful uh, to look at. And I really, uh, really dig them. Just the potions, uh, well, the potions are just white <laughs> cubes. Uh, I don't know what they could do with this. Maybe a potion-shaped uh, token. I mean, they went with the heart ones. So, yeah, maybe they could have done that. But that's just the, the most nitpicky thing ever someone could say. Uh, but, yeah, if I had to change something in the components, that would be it. Um, again, uh, you saw me in the playthrough. I was struggling a little bit with um, with the organization, um, placing the items below my character sheet and placing the uh, the skills as well. That doesn't happen uh, that much while, when you're playing normally with two hands, okay? So uh, if you might think, oh, uh, that that's a major flaw, for me, it really isn't. Um, I think it's a pretty cool way to use make use of everything uh, that fits in here because this can uh, not everything can fit in here. So it's a good way to use the, the cards uh, as um, have them, you know, more than one use. It's not just a trap here. You have all the rewards. <coughs> sorry, you have all the rewards on the borders and you can just slip it uh, below your character if you have want the item or if you want the skill or if you just want the XP just slip it down the level card so i think that's great it really saves up space a uh, great way to do everything and honestly you're you're looking at the trap and you're you're already uh, thinking well what I, how, how do i want to take this so yeah all the information is very well placed very well um, given to the player so plus for that um, yeah so i mean in terms of arts or, or I think it's it it fits uh, if it's the game. Uh, maybe the the, the heroes um, could be a little bit cooler. I don't know. They're kind of simple, but yeah, it's fine for what it is. Again, this is a small box game. You can't ask the world from it. So yeah, for me, it's a big thumbs up. I really like this game uh, for the price point. I mean, I think it's an amazing game to have. 
you you are going to uh, to uh, dig out a lot of playthroughs for this. I mean, if you if you enjoy it, if you experience it and enjoy it, uh, yeah, you are going to have a lot of playthroughs from from this. And for the the um, the, the the price point, it's a great value for the price point. So yeah, this is One Deck Dungeon. I definitely like it. I definitely recommend it in terms of filler games. If you don't like small games or filler games then yeah, of course you're not going to like it. Uh, if you just want, you know, big epic stuff like uh, <laughs> coming back to Blue Maven or Sword and Sorcery, whatever. Uh, if you just like, you know, that epic stuff, you're not going to like this. But uh, if you want something to, if you like the fantasy theme and you want something to, you know, just fill in those gaps of time. This, uh, by the way, they say this is 30 minutes. Our playthrough was higher than this. Uh, but yeah, if you're not filming, if you're just going through it uh, really fast, yeah, I guess 30 minutes is uh, is um, is the standard, I would say. Um, yeah, so if you want, you know, a filler game for 30 minutes, which is not that much of a filler, it's actually a pretty uh, solid time for a normal uh, playthrough. I mean, not for a regular dungeon crawler, though they usually take um, a lot of time because they are usually a little bit fiddly and you have to uh, take care of the AI, which takes usually a bit. So yeah, it's, uh, let's call it a dungeon crawler. Uh, so in, in that sense, it's much, uh, much faster than the regular dungeon crawler. Uh, and yeah, definitely a recommendation for me. Um, yeah, that's all I think I have to say about then One Deck Dungeon. I hope you guys enjoy the content for the game. Again, the um, the thingy for the campaign is up. Uh, if you guys want to see it, uh, just uh, leave a like on the video. If there's a total of 50 likes, I didn't mention it, but I think I'll leave it in the comments of the third uh, playthrough uh, video. If there's a combination of 50 likes, not just 50 on YouTube, but 50 on YouTube and Board Game Geek, then yeah, we're going to do a uh, continue with the campaign for the One Deck Dungeon. Uh, but yeah, that was that's it for me. I'll just shut up now. Hope you enjoyed the video uh, and thank you again for watching. I will see you on the next one, guys. Bye bye.